Thomas, can you hear me okay over there? Thank you. My name's Jeff Palmer, I'm a paramedic. We are uh, joined today by Station Officer Paul Shafter from Fire Rescue Station 33 in Ingerdean. Um, Paul and I have been uh, in our respective jobs for a fair while and uh, I think for about 25 years we've been attending accidents and uh, I've been treated with people. Paul's been uh, attending to the fire protection and rescue the people out of crash mode vehicles. Paul's just going to have a quick word to you this morning and uh, explain what uh, the boys from his school are going to do. Okay, just to make sure this is where we're Yep. Uh, no? Okay. Does it make any difference? Alright. Will it make any difference? Alright. Will it be better without it? Okay. Okay. What's, what you're going to see now is basically it's just going to be a simulation of the car that we're um, working on. Doesn't have one more. Have any damage? Most of the motor vehicle accidents we turn up to the car might have minor damage. Uh, the patient inside could be suffering from a spinal injury, which is what we're going to um, see today. The ambulance officers are going to be treating the patient for a spinal injury. We work in consultation with the ambulance. The RFS uh, here, here is the fire protection, which is what happens in a lot of parts of the um, Shire. Uh, in the National Park down south, there are areas where the RFS will be coming out and assisting us. We have the statutory role of carrying out rescue. That's why we carry a lot of extra rescue here. You're going to be seeing certain techniques. It may look like why are we doing this. Uh, try to envisage a car that's been basically wrecked in a large motor vehicle accident. I'll be giving this new direction and I'll be hoping to get the ambulance. I'll be getting the information off the ambulance. At the end, if there's any questions that you want to ask, please store them and wait till the end. I hope you enjoy what you're going to be seeing now. You're going to be seeing an array of equipment, an array of uh, techniques here. Okay? You guys ready? What the crew from Fire Rescue have um, taken the liberty to do before we've started the demonstration is to stabilise the car so you can see the chocks of wood underneath there. Obviously we don't want the car, uh, which may have been accident damaged, rolling away. So we're not relying on the transmission or the handbrake. They rely on chocking the car and it also means that the vehicle is not going to move while we're doing some extrication. <laughs> As you can see, it doesn't take long to break some glass. And the firefighters from Engadine RFS are providing fire protection. Uh, as Paul said, sometimes in areas of the Shire, particularly on the uh, top of the freeway, it would be Fire Rescue 33 going down to perform the rescue. And uh, RFS brigades typically from Waterfall would provide the fire protection. Similar situation in all the areas of the National Park. I'm joined today by Brett Lacrini, who's a mate of mine, ex-professional golfer. Uh, he's not bad on the, on, the, on the clubs, but he's a better paramedic these days anyway. <laughs> that sheet that uh, Sparky from RFS has just put on the ground, it's uh, laminated glass. So uh, very handy in the case of a, an accident. It tends to hold its shape because it's got plastic on either side and it doesn't shatter in, into a million bits. Yeah. 
So the firefighters have gained access and uh, typical, typical paramedic has to work on his own. He's laid, laid, loaded down rather like a pack mule. Brett's going to access the patient from the passenger side of the vehicle. Looks like it's a very young patient in there. He's actually a jockey uh, and he's been paid apprentice wages. He's won a few races and he's bought a very expensive car which unfortunately he's crashed today. What the firefighters are doing with the plastic sheets is to provide some glass protection both for the paramedic and the patient. And they've now got the homeotro shears which are a very powerful piece of kit and they're going to cut this car up like it's a tin can. Brett's in there assessing the patient for the injuries, checking on the level of consciousness of the patient, checking whether he's got any spinal damage, checking whether he's breathing, his uh, airway is clear, whether his circulation is good. You notice one of the firefighters at the front of the vehicle underneath the bonnet is just making sure that the battery is disconnected and that there's no power going to be causing the car potentially to catch on fire. If it did happen, the two firefighters, Pip and uh, Cameron, are here with a charge line, which means all they have to do is open the, the valve and uh, spray water over everybody. So that door is open and you can notice that the firefighters used a piece of rope to attach the door to the roof rack of the car to prevent it springing open uh, when they cut the door open with the spreaders. This other piece of equipment that the firefighter is using on what we call the B pillar of the car, the B pillars between the front doors and the rear doors. And this bit of kit is called the shears. So we spread with the tool that's laying on the ground over there and then we cut with the shears. Shears these days are very effective, very sharp and they don't tend to cause the car too much movement when we're doing it. Many moons ago the whole car would shake when the shears were being used. This year, this, this, in later years, they're so sharp and it means that the car doesn't move very violently when the shears are being used. Over the other side of the vehicle, Brett is treating the patient. He's probably putting on some monitoring gear, putting on some oxygen, and if he hasn't done so already, he'll be putting on some spinal protection in the form of a, a stiff neck cervical collar in case of some neck injuries to the patient. What has happened in the accident that um, has caused this car to be written off is that the chassis rail has been bent. And once so as you can see, Brett has applied some oxygen to the patient, he's put a cervical collar on and he's doing some monitoring of the patient's heart and other vital signs. case of some inadvertent deployment of the airbag. Sometimes the airbags do tend to go off at an inopportune time while the rescue is being performed and they can cause serious damage to both the patient and of course the rescuers who are in the vehicle.
So the station officer just liaising with the paramedic Brett, checking on the condition of the patient. And the paramedic Brett has said that he wants the B pillar, which is the part between the two doors or what's left of the two doors removed, so we can get the patient out quite easily and minimise further damage to them. So the Hamaltro shears are now in use. Years ago you might have known them as the Jaws of Life. And it doesn't take too much effort to cut a modern car door up. A lot of vehicles these days have side impact protection. Cars for a long time have very good front on and rear on protection. They have been lacking somewhat in the side protection. Uh, it has made the job of the firefighters just a little bit more difficult. But with the equipment that they've got today, they're easily able to cut the, um, the car up quite quickly. So we're just in the final stages of removing the B-pillar. As you can see on the top of the vehicle, one of the firefighters has put a piece of perspex because that's meant to provide some protection against the very sharp edge, even though the guys have got high quality personal protective equipment. Um, the patient, when they're being extricated, he hasn't got any sort of protective equipment on him. And uh, we just don't want ourselves or the patient getting injured. Now for this patient, being the jockey size that he is, we would normally roll down the front seat and get him out the side where the doors have been removed. But for purposes of the exercise, we're just going to show you what sort of capability the fire brigade has got in regards to being able to totally destroy a car, particularly if there were more than uh, one patient in the car or there were um, front and rear seat passengers, like I say, they may have to do some further cutting and dismantling of the car to get the patients out safely without aggravating any injuries that they currently have. It's generally a fair bit of liaison. You can see Brett talking to the station officer just about the patient's condition. Sometimes we may need to get the patient out a lot quicker than we would like to because of their injuries. If they are a patient who has injuries that are critical and they need immediate surgery, we do tend to take the patient out a lot quicker. If they are relatively stable, we keep them in there so as we don't aggravate any injuries that they have.
skydivers are now taking the, the shears to what we call the C pillar of the car. And now he's going to cut the B pillar on the passenger side of the vehicle. Preparation for extrication of the patient. Paul has just got what we call a rescue board. Just placing a short rescue board behind the patient. Well, Brett carefully treats him and makes sure that his injuries aren't being aggravated. Firefighters are now preparing on both sides of the car, one using spreaders, one using the shears, making an incision into the roof part of the vehicle. What we've decided to do is remove the back of the seat because sometimes they do tend to jam, particularly if the car is a highly electronic sort of vehicle. If we can't remove the seat or, or lay it down, it's very difficult to safely extricate the patient. In this case, we're just cutting it with the shears. Notice that the piece of equipment that the firefighter is using, it's completely battery powered, as opposed to the, the guy standing next to him on his left. That's a hydraulic piece of machinery which is powered by a generator.
this car being a four-wheel drive or a sports utility vehicle, you notice that the rear exposed pillar is quite thicker compared to your average sedan. Just to take a little bit more time to cut than normal because of the increase in its thickness. So now we get a large crowbar, put it over where we made a snip in the roof. And in a coordinated effort, we turn this thing into a convertible. sharp pieces of metal and if the firefighters don't have enough plastic pieces they use what they call a debris sheet which is that piece of canvas covering to make the area safe Brett the paramedic is just talking about how the patient will be extricated from the vehicle. So placing the rescue board, the large rescue board underneath the patient who is already on a short rescue board. He's going to be slid up on the short rescue board. This is one of the most critical times to in the whole rescue operation because we are now actually manually handling the patient. He's generally attached to some equipment. Sometimes there's some intravenous fluids running. We don't want to dislodge them. We don't want to injure the patient. And we also don't want to injure the backs of the attending paramedics or the firefighters. This bloke's a lightweight, but if you're trying to get somebody my size out of the joint and you don't do it properly, you do yourself a potentially career-threatening injury. Brett's calling the lift there, he's instructing the guys what to do. Moved him up once, they're going to go again. So out comes the patient, and obviously if we had a full-size ambulance here. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. We'll be placing in the back of an ambulance. Brett would do some further assessment, and he would be taken to St George Hospital, bearing the condition of his injuries. Sutherland Hospital is a great hospital, but St George is a hospital that we transport uh, patients who suffer significant trauma to in this area. 
if he was a paediatric patient, but we're saying that he's a jockey, if he was a very young bloke, we'd probably take him directly to Sydney Children's Hospital. Ladies and gentlemen, could you put your hands together for the firefighting crew of Station 33, Brett Laprini, and the firefighters from Ingedang Royal Fire Service. Thank you very much. Any questions from the audience, please? This